Okay. Out of all the dumb places I've put my mat over the course of doing this series, this was the dumbest. Come to cross legged. And we're gonna do some of these Sufi circles. You're inhaling forward and exhaling back, making circles around your spine. They're not complicated. They don't have to be big circles. They just have to be big enough for you to feel them. You're looking for your hips and your low back. If cross-legged is uncomfortable for you, you can sit on a block. Or it's okay, switch directions now. It's all right if you do one of those kind of muscly cross-leggeds where your uh, knees are kind of approaching your ears. That's all right, a lot of athletes do it like that. Those muscles will release. Keep doing these circles. The reason I put my mat in this totally stupid place is because I wanted you to see that stream. And more than that, I wanted you to hear the stream. Hopefully you're going to hear it. All right. Open your heart. Your hands are on your knees. You're rolling your heart open. And then you're exhaling down. Yeah, inhale, seated cow lift. Take your hands to your heart. Lift your arms up. This is still an inhale. And exhale them down to the sides. Do it again. Inhale your arms up. Exhale down. And then grab your opposite elbow and exhale to your left. And inhale up. Exhale to your right. Inhale up. Exhale left. Inhale up. Exhale right. Inhale up. Arms go out to the sides. Do the same thing. Just finding that side bend in a different angle on the side body. Inhale up. Exhale all the other way. Going really slow. Inhale up. Exhale left. Inhale up. Exhale right. Inhale up. And put your fingers behind you on your mat. Your fingers are going to point towards your hips. And do you see what I'm doing? I am rolling my shoulder blades back and down the back, really trying to get maximum opening of the heart here. This is not a hard pose. It's not a complicated pose. Anybody can do this. You're putting your hands behind you. You're rolling your heart open. Those arms and those hands are propping open your heart. And what you're feeling here is maximum lung expansion. Mm -hmm. Come out of that and come down onto your forearms and we're gonna do the same thing, except we're gonna straighten our legs. Straighten your legs. Roll the shoulder blades back and down the back. See what I did? Same thing, just opening the heart the same way. This is about lungs. If you want to take your head back, you can, but you don't have to. So much fourth chakra going on right now. The coronavirus is about lungs. These are weird, weird times. Come down onto your back. And then I'm going to do a fish pose, which is the same as before, the same thing. I'm on my elbows this time, and I'm rolling those shoulder blades back and down the back, making that arch on the top 
part of my body. My head is going all the way back, but you can do this pose without your head going all the way back. You can keep your head up if you need to. If that's too much neck stretch, keep your head up. We are looking for a big heart opener though, giant heart opener. Come down, hug your knees into your body. Take this into a happy baby. Take your arms to the insides of the thighs and the outsides of the shins. Yeah, this is a big groin stretch, big glute stretch, pretty much stretching everything you got. We're moving slowly today. All right, disentangle yourself from that. Hug your right knee into your body and take your left leg straight up towards the sky. And then exhale it down and hover it. And inhale it up. So when you're going up, you're feeling this uh, hamstring stretch, maybe an IT band stretch. And when you're going down, go down now, you are feeling your core. Good. Inhale up. Exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. If you find this difficult, or if you find this easy, inhale up. The secret to doing better is the same. It's to make it prettier, make it prettier. Okay, and then put your right foot on your left thigh, or left on right, I think maybe that's left, I don't know, whatever. Whatever leg was straight, keep it straight. You're putting your other foot on top of it, and you are in a figure four, it looks like a four. And if you like it better with your leg bent, as I do, then you can bend that leg and thread your hands through. We're just getting into the opposite hip. Good, release that. And keep that shape in your legs and let it turn into a twist. You're gonna just let the whole shape go to your, I think that's your left, until your right foot is standing and your right knee points towards the ceiling. Abdominal twist. Pick that up and come onto your forearms. Let's ride our bikes a little bit. This is core work. What I was trying to say about those leg lifts that we did a second ago is that if it's hard or if it's easy, what we're all working on is making it more elegant. And you're like, why? I'm not a dancer. What difference does it make if it's elegant? If it's elegant, you're gonna be using your intuition about your own body. And if it's elegant, you're going to be more in alignment. It's uh, kind of it's kind of the magic aspect of exercise. Tune in into that. Come down onto your back. Hug your knees into your body. Yeah, 
Release that. Put your feet on the ground and lift up your hips. Your head, the back of your head is on the ground. Your shoulders are on the ground. This is bridge pose. Um, before we did a big heart opener, remember that thing where I was like, feel the maximum expansion of your lungs? This is another heart opener. It's, it's a close relative. Find that. Anytime you're rolling your shoulder blades back and down the back, you're really expanding the lungs and expanding the heart. Okay, take your hips down. Just slowly. And then pretend there's an invisible flashlight in between your knees and make circles on the ceiling with the invisible flashlight. You can put your hands on your knees if that feels better. You can make big circles or small circles. It doesn't matter. What we're looking for here is a sacral massage. You're trying to find your sacrum against the ground. Switch directions. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you're hugging your other leg. Um, I'm gonna call it whatever leg you didn't hug before. The other one is straight and you're doing those leg lift things, lowering it down. Picking it up. And let's call it an exhale down. Inhale up. And exhale down. Inhale up. Exhale down. The important thing about this one is not what we do, it's the slowness and elegance that we're doing it with. Pick it up. Looks like I'm going for one more. Lower it down. Pick it up. Okay, and then put your opposite foot on that knee. The leg is still straight and we're experimenting with figure four with the leg straight, at which point it does look like a four. You see where it gets that name. And then if you want to, Bend the knee, I prefer it with the knee bent, but you decide how you like it. This is a hip stretch. Throughout this whole thing, you're trying to slow down your breath. All right, release that, but keep that shape in your legs and we're gonna just let that shape go right to the, uh, whatever direction that is, until your foot is standing and your knee is pointing towards the sky. If you're like, I like Cinnamon Kennedy, she's a good yoga teacher, but I wish she would learn her right from her left. That day is not coming, I gave up. I'm not gonna, I'm just not gonna do it. I protest right and left. It's not happening. You're gonna have to figure that one out yourself. But that said, isn't it nice to practice yoga together? Yes, it is. Bring that shape up. And okay, put one foot on either edge of the mat and let your knees go out to, let's call it left. Let your knees go out to the left and grab your opposite elbows above your head. 
This is a psoas stretch. See if you can feel it from your that leg, the, the one that's on top, across your hip, up into your abdomen. See if you can feel that stretch. It's so nice. Pick up your knees and let them go the other way. One foot on either edge of the mat. Oh, it's so good. Pick your knees up, and uh, oh, guess what? We're gonna roll onto our belly. Roll over onto your belly. Don't worry, it's still gonna be easy, more or less. Come onto your belly, and we're gonna grab our hands. Grab your hands behind you, and roll your shoulder blades back and down the back. This is Cobra Pose. It's a version of Cobra that I really like because it's very unambiguous. Grabbing your hands like this is very, like you can't mess this up. Your shoulders are really gonna go back and down your back. It's emphatic, I guess that's what I should say. If you want to pick up your feet also, then you will be in uh, locust. That's kind of a hard pose. It's up to you. All right, that was quick. Put your forearms on the ground. Roll your shoulder blades back and down the back and feel this sphinx pose. Let it be nice. Sphinx is a passive pose. You can make it a little more muscly if you want to by like kind of like trying to Roll your shoulder blades back to the extent that you open through your collarbone. But you don't have to. The main thing is to find this passive back bend in a spot where you like it in your back. Okay, and then I'm grabbing one of my feet. I'm going to call that my right foot with my right hand. And the purpose of this is a quad stretch. Looking for a quad stretch. We could do more difficult things here, like half bow or something, but we're not going to. We're looking for a quad stretch. Find that. If, it, if you can't get your foot here, that means you really need to stretch your quad. You should maybe try it with a strap or something. Yeah, do the other side. Other leg. I'm down on the forearm on the opposite arm. nice right yoga I gotta stress yoga is supposed to feel good it really is some people like that hard stuff and they like the hard stuff because it makes them feel good it's all about feeling good all right and then adjust your pants no you don't have to do that put your forehead on the ground and your butt in the air and you're on your knees and your arms are stretched out in front of you and this is puppy pose it's a nice stretch for various parts of your body, including your shoulders and your low back and your hips. Wiggle here as much as you want. can't see it, but right here is a bend in the stream, a little waterfall. Turn that into a child's pose. 
putting your forehead on the ground. And you know, if you're not very flexible and your child's pose looks a lot like a puppy pose, like as in you're more comfortable with your hips in the air, that's fine. Do it like that. Noticing here that in child's pose, you are getting a full stretch on your back from your tailbone to the top of your head and all points in between. Oh, and then walk your hands off the mat to the right. Kind of turning your child's pose. It's still a child's pose, but you're adding a little bit of a side bend on that left side. And then go the other way. You can't really see what I'm doing here, and I wasn't entirely doing it because I didn't want to fall into this pricker bush. But what you're doing is child's pose, just walking your hands off the mat in order to get into your side body. Yeah, and then turn around, come to a cross leg in. Take your right leg out and tuck your left foot into your right thigh. And come down to Janusrasasana. <laughs> Mine is really funny looking because of some rocks that I was sitting on. But you know what it is. One leg is straight, one leg is bent in. Coming down, John Richardson, it's a beautiful forward bend. If you feel anything in your knees, you're not doing it right. You need to adjust. Make sure you feel nothing in your knees. And if it helps to lean on something, like a pillow or a cushion or, I don't know, whatever, lean on it. You will find that your yoga progresses a lot faster if your body is comfortable in a pose like this, or in any pose, but especially these big stretches like this. If you can convince your body that it's all right to let go, if your muscles will let go, then you will go deeper into the pose. Whereas if you're holding it with any amount of resistance, you're not gonna really get very far. So that's why I'm like, lean on something or something, make it comfortable, it is important that it's comfortable. Come up, switch your legs, go the other way. Yeah. Laying your body down and you're finding a stretch in your hamstring and in your IT band and maybe in your low back and maybe in your calf. It should be a nice stretch because you have balanced your body in such a way that your muscles are all right. They're all right to let go. They're all right to relax.
We'll kind of come up from that. Do any last thing you need to do. It's time for Shavasana, yes. Gonna do longish Shavasana with some stream noises, all right. Hey, I wanna, I wanna say that when you're doing Shavasana, you're doing yoga. This is not an add-on to your practice. This is your practice. It's important and it's effective. All right, wiggle your various body parts. Inhale your arms in one direction and your feet in the other direction. Exhale, roll and stay there. Breathe here a little. All right, come on up to seated. And take your hands onto your forehead, breathe into your sinuses. Honoring every cell in your body. Take your hands to your heart and breathe into your lungs. I can't see you, I'm not with you, but I dedicate my practice to you. Namaste. Thanks for practicing with me.